chapter six, cost of capital and changing risks. Uh, we just made, made one small revision from uh, capital structure from your F9, and now we are just joining the topic. So cost of capital, of course, when we say cost of capital, it means back and changing risks, which means that when business, business risk or financial risk, they change, what happens to the cost of capital? So this is the topic if you could relate to your previous knowledge of, you know, uh, how to say that thing, uh, what I call betas, because that was the measurement of risk, beta. Uh, and your betas change uh, with different business risks, with different financial risks. Financial risk means, you know, the debt equity ratio changes and the risk changes and the change in that risk is reflected through beta and then you use beta to calculate your cost of equity and then you calculate your back. So this is what we are going to discuss. It is very much, uh, we actually have discussed many things from this chapter while doing chapter number two and three from AFM. And we also did some revisions from F9. So you would not see this chapter very uh, unfamiliar. Quite a lot of knowledge is same. The impact of debt finance on the cost of capital. So impact of debt finance on the cost of capital. This is what we were talking about. Cost of capital means back. And I'm sure that you remember and you this traditional theory and Modigliani and Miller theory that when you add more of the debt, what happens to back? It is good. Is it going down or not? So we say that as noted earlier, the cost of debt is cheaper. And why debt is cheaper, I'm repeating it again, debt, is, debt has lesser risk because debt has a guaranteed return in form of interest and debts are usually secured because they are backed by some collateral. There is a mortgage. So because the, because the lenders, you know, the debt providers, the creditors, they face less risk and therefore they are happy with the lower returns. So debt is usually cheaper in the beginning. Because debt holders, they face less risk. So it is sensible for companies with stable cash flows to use some debt finance. Here we review key theories that address the issue of how much debt should be used. That is always a very big question. And this is a question for which you never have an absolute answer. It is very subjective, situation to situation. Modigliani and Miller m and theory. So m and demonstrated that ignoring tax, the use of debt simply transfers more risk to shareholders and that this makes equity more expensive. Like when you add more debt, there is more risk and equity shareholders, they start asking higher returns. So equity becomes expensive so that the use of debt does not reduce finance cost. That is, does not reduce the value. This is what we just learned before that in the absence of tax, as you add more debt, your VAC remains unchanged. m and then introduced the effect of a corporation tax and they said, okay, fine. Without, in the absence of tax, the VAC remains straight line. But when you introduce tax, when you introduce the corporate tax, that if debt also saves corporate tech, corporation tax, then the extra effect means that the VAC will fall because of the tax impact. This suggests that a company should use as much fun debt finance as it can. Relationship between VAC and value. Uh, I mean, VAC and value. Value means value of business. Of course, VAC goes down if your VAC is your cost of capital. When VAC goes down, the value of the business increases because ultimately a business is a combination of many projects and projects have those cash flows. So when you discount them at a lower discount rate, your present values increase. As you would expect that a fall in the VAC benefits shareholders benefits shareholders because when the value of business increases shareholders they gain this is because the present value of the cash flows generated by a company to its investors 
will be higher if it is discounted at a lower rate in an efficient market this would imply that the market value of equity plus debt will rise as the vac falls okay we understand this thing nothing to be explained a lot so this is cost of equity ke this is the formula now we need to discuss this thing this formula you have not done before uh, or at least i have not taught you before uh, if you remember in last lesson we did one long question of that fubuku fubuki company which was in you are already uploaded on the site a long question for adjusted apv apv and i was doing the question and i think jivan said that sir can we find out the cost of equity with another formula i said yes you can do it with two i used another way i will discuss today both of those methods which i used last time i mean one method i used last time the second one is this one so this is another formula it is called cost of equity is equal to ke is equal to kei plus 1 minus t into kei minus kd vt over ve now you know that ke is cost of equity kd is cost of debt vd is value of debt value of equity so ke is the cost of equity of a geared company and kei is the cost of equity of an ungeared company if you remember the question which we were doing last time i mean the previous chapter we were given a company uh, which had a 40 14% cost of equity it was a geared company having a debt equity ratio of 2 is to 1 and uh, then we said that we will we have to find out the cost of equity of our company based on this data remember so what you could have done in that ke thing you you should have or you could have used 14% here 14% here ke you were supposed to calculate i did it in two steps like gearing and ungearing but you can do it simply as well plus 1 minus tax into cost of equity which we have to find out and minus cost of debt which was given and vd over ve so this formula is given in the exam also and this is the formula which will help you to solve questions in one step i mean what we did last time last time what we did we were given a company which was a geared company a geared company and from that geared company they gave us its beta if you remember uh, and that was equity beta from that equi equity beta we used capm formula and from capm formula we calculated the cost of equity and then we uh, i'm sorry um, no they did not give us the beta actually i'm sorry what we did that we used capm formula and what we did that we calculated the beta and this beta was beta of equity then we converted it we said that it is a geared beta and then we converted into beta asset which means an ungeared beta and based on that we then calculated again we used the capm and we calculated the cost of equity this is what we did in question number Uh, the long question from the last lecture which was pabuki company three steps we did step 1 step 2 and step 3 so that took us something like 25 minutes or 20 minutes we could have done all of this thing by using this formula one single step so this formula because i had not taught you until last lesson so i did not use it but now you can go back to that question of pabuki company and when you were doing you know finding out the equity beta then converting it back into asset beta and then calculating cost of equity so this cost of equity you wanted to find so you can assume that this is the cost of equity i want to find out and these are the things which i already have and you can use it straight away and find out the answer so this is what we say revised formula for ke so this formula we have not introduced you before any question from here what i just explained i mean if you had if you had missed the previous lesson or if you had not watched that video question which is called on your on your website chapter number 15 last lecture uh, sorry chapter number 5 last lecture it said that adjusted it uh, present value apv long question apv so in that long question apv for buki company i used these three steps but today we can use the same question we can do by just doing one step 
So we said revised formula for cost of equity. Okay, question. M and M cost so, of equity. Yeah, please. Somebody wants to ask something. Yes. Uh, so this means that this formula to calculate the cost of equity. Yeah, you said that going forward we don't need to do that thing and we should be doing it. Yes, in exam you can use this formula. Uh, I mean, it depends on how do you feel comfortable. I feel comfortable doing those three steps because when I'm doing those three steps, they give me logical answers about beta asset, beta equity. It's 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 just another way of doing the same thing. Answer will always be the same. Um, I mean, you can use this formula. It will save your time. And the, the cost, the cost of debt is the cost of debt. I saw that it is pre-tax cost of debt, not post-tax cost of debt. Yeah. Okay. It is always because if it it is a pre-tax, and that's why we are multiplying with one minus t. If it had been post-tax, then you don't multiply with one minus t. One minus okay. t only multiply when it is pre-tax. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, M and M cost of equity. So, an ungeared company with a cost of equity of twelve percent. Ungeared company means all equity financed. Equity cost twelve percent is considering adjusting its gearing by taking out a loan of six percent and using it to buy back equity. Now, if you see that equity is causing them twelve percent debt, they can buy at six percent. So if they can take out some debt at six percent and return back some of the equity, so they are actually replacing uh, an expensive source of finance with a cheaper source of finance. <clears throat> After the buyback, the ratio of the market value of debt to the market value of equity will be one is to one. So so far it is hundred percent equity because it is ungeared, but you want to make it fifty percent equity, fifty percent debt, and corporation tax is thirty percent. <clears throat> and the question says, calculate the new KE after the buyback. So, you know that KE is in an ungeared company, and KEI is a geared company. Thing. So it says you that first find out the KE after the buyback cost of equity, <clears throat> and the second is calculate and comment on the back after the buyback. My first question is, what do you understand? Cost of equity at the moment is twelve percent, and after buyback, will it go up or will it go down? Logically, go down. Down. Cost of equity should go down. Why? <clears throat> What is cost of equity? I'm not saying back. Sorry. It should go up because it should, there will be less debt in the organization. No, there will be more debt. Right now, there is no debt. There is no debt. It is twelve percent. Cost of equity should be go up because as you buy back, that the debt ratio will go up, right? Right. So when the debt ratio, which means the business has more risk. Okay. So the so the equity will uh, the equity or shareholder will demand more return. Makes sense. vac may go down vac may go down but cost of equity if you will calculate it goes up to 16.2% <clears throat> what you did you use that your same formula of capm remember your capm mm -hmm. like rf rm etc yes so you use that capm formula and k is equal to 12 you are using that 12% here because there is nothing else is is given and then uh see here 12 plus 1 minus 0.3 what is this 1 minus 0.3 1 minus t huh 1 minus t tax minus t and 12 minus 6 this is the your v e and v d and it becomes it comes out to be 16.2% Cost of equity logically should increase, and then you calculate the VAC. Now, fifty percent at sixteen point two plus like zero point five means because one is to one ratio is one is to one. One is to one means that fifty percent. So fifty percent of your capital is at sixteen point two percent. Then fifty percent of your capital is at six percent. 
but 6% into the tax effect 1 minus t, it comes out to be 10.2. Okay, drawbacks of m and drawbacks, we already know. A key assumption of m and theory is that capital markets are perfect. That is a company will always be able to raise finance to fund good projects. In reality, this is not true. Absence of tax is not true. Transaction cost is not true. And you know, capital is available freely is not true because there are always capital rationing. You do not have unlimited supply of capital. Capital market imperfections will be there. Uh, capital market imperfections. You have direct financial distress cost. Uh, the legal and administrative cost associated with the bankruptcy or reorganization of the firm. You cannot say that there are no transaction costs or there are no, not any other risks as, uh, associated. There are direct financial distress costs. Financial distress means what? Financial distress means that any business when it is under financial stress. So when you are under financial stress, does that have any cost as well? I mean, financial distress means that when you are, you know, having a lot of debt, probably you are having some liquidity issues, etc. So you are into a financial distress, you are into a financial difficulty. And those financial difficulties and financial distress, they have their own cost. Some of them are direct. The direct are legal. Maybe you are not making payment in time. Maybe you are going towards bankruptcy. There are a lot of administrative costs associated with that. And then there are indirect co distress costs as well. Indirect cost means that number one, a higher cost of debt because you are under financial distress. Nobody will give you the debt. And if anybody gives you a debt, they will charge you a higher cost. So you cannot say because Modigliani and Miller, they said that debt is freely available and take as much as you want take as much as you want, but it's not possible because when you take as much as you want, you go into financial distress and financial distress, it does have cost. Lost sales due to customers having concerns that a firm with high gearing may be at risk of failure and so will not be able to provide after sales service or to honor product guarantees. Customers, they may turn away from you. Managers and employees will try drastic actions to save the firm that might result in some long-term problems example closing down plants downsizing drastic cost cuts and selling off valuable assets just to raise cash so these are all indirect financial distress cost and higher prices or shorter payment terms from suppliers suppliers will also see you as a risky organization and they may not be willing to extend credit and even if they will give credit they might be uh, charging higher so these are some of the impacts <clears throat>